Very Flounder good. is Ariel's demon. Nice. Yeah? Nice. Revelations. Yeah. Thanks, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> this is the long-awaited discussion following the His Dark Materials read-along that we did back in oh, so December. Long ago. Yeah. Yes. That's only two months ago. It's fine. Mm. We're very yeah. busy people. And, yeah. <laughs> and some people were still catching up, myself included. <laughs> Me too. We've already done two videos which we'll link down below. One of them's a discussion video that we did back in August, I think. And one of them is a His Dark Materials tag as well that we made then. But we're going to film two videos now, which is just going to be a long discussion, and the second half will be over on my channel as well. So we have some yep. questions that we, that we some do. of you have sent to us, and also questions that we want to ask ourselves. Yes. Oh, actually, I remember what I wanted to ask you to oh. start with, which was, reading it this time round, mm -hmm. did you notice anything new? Did anything I know you did. I know that you did. What did I? You noticed the wardrobe. Oh yes. Which I had yes, noticed that was, before, that but I was forgotten like, about. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, How had I not seen that before? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't feel like I realised that much more this time round. I'm, I'm answering my own question now. Yeah, I don't think that I did either. They're tiny, tiny things that mm. I notice each time round about how clever maybe the language is when he adapts certain words yes. for different worlds. Um, uh, and I think every time I read it, I notice how much more complex Mrs. Coulter is than I remember mm. her. Um, yes. And I admire that. But I think there was less this time, but we've read it so many times now. Yeah, I've only read it two times post-English degree. Okay. And once was not that long ago really at all. Mm -hmm. So th this time round was just like a, a refresh really. Yeah. But I, I noticed so much that the previous time, but we talked about that last time. Yeah, we did. So yeah. in the other discussion video, we mostly talked about Narnia and um, his dark materials and Pullman's mm. influences with Blake and stuff for writing these books. So we won't be talking about that here mm. today. So mm. if you want to hear about more, you can go over and check that out. But yeah, no, the, mm. the wardrobe. Yes, so the wardrobe. wardrobe. So the first scene is where Lyra is sneaking into this room that she's not supposed to be in while the masters are going to listen to Lord Azrael talk. The room of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> the room of retirement, <laughs> yes. And in there, there, well, her uncle catches her and says, you have to stay and you have to spy for me, go into this wardrobe. So she goes into this wardrobe, which is full of all the um, cloaks that they wear to dinner, and some of which have fur hoods. Hmm. Um, so she puts all of these fur hoods on the floor um, and she ends up falling asleep. But it's like the wardrobe of Narnia, so going in, surrounded by fur coats and going out the other side, yeah. except that Lyra doesn't go out into another world, she comes back into the one that she has, but she's still gone through something after mm. she exits. She's not the same person she was as she went yeah. in. So I kind of like that, but I also kind of like the fact that she fell asleep in there. I think that's <laughs> Pullman being a bit, you know, sneaky in there and a bit of a dig. <laughs> like, mm. it's a bit dull, mm. so she fell asleep. But I love that that's right at the very beginning and mm -hmm. it's... It, it's such an obvious thing, and I can't believe I didn't see it before. Well, I think I don't know. It, I don't think I noticed it till maybe my. F I've read it quite a lot of times, as I mentioned in my last one. Mm -hmm. I wrote my dissertation, so I've read it so many times now. I'm not sure when I noticed it, but it certainly wasn't the first few times that I read no, it. No, no. I like it, and it's things like that when you notice them, you feel like you're giving yourself brownie points. You're yeah, like, yes, I noticed that. <laughs> oh, another thing is, I think it would be quite interesting to read Paradise Lost and then go back and yeah, but who has time again. for that? But <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I just I wanted to do it this time round, but I just couldn't quite bring myself to do it. No, I have an edition of Paradise of it Lost. Before, but that is introduced by Philip Pullman and has some of his annotations. Mm. And I really like the epicness of Paradise yeah. Lost. And Milton is such a great one with language, which which is what I like also about his style materials when uh, Pullman's inventing different words. I think it's kind of yes. a nod to Milton too, because yeah, he invented yeah. so many words. Mm. Um, but <sighs> it's yeah. so, so intense. Yeah, I remember doing a sort of close reading of it at, at university of the, the first. The footnotes are longer than the yeah. actual text but I hear it gets quite dull in the middle <laughs> yeah mm. I like but it's one of those things isn't it where you appreciate the storytelling aspect like this mm. is not going to make me friends but I don't really love Lord of the Rings but I love the story and I love the characters so I love the mm. films but the writing style of the books just I get bogged down in it no I'm, I'm not a fan of Tolkien's writing you know since we filmed in August, the BBC have announced that they are making an adaptation, and if this is true, it was reported in a Welsh newspaper that it's going to be five series long with 40 hour long episodes. 40 episodes each an hour long, and I so hope that that is true because having the epic Game of Thrones vibe about it would really work for this. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the only way to do it justice really as well, and hopefully they've got a big enough budget. Mm. So, because I've heard reports of that, and then I've also heard reports on like an eight part series. 
So, well, mm. an eight part would work for the first book, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, it's also tricky. Um, but I would, I would love, I would love for it to be that long. And mm. I was thinking about casting, yeah. have you thought of anyone that you might want to play people? Well, that's the thing. With the, the film that we don't talk about, yes. I think that they actually did some very good casting. I loved, um, what's his name? Daniel Craig. <laughs> yeah, I love Daniel Craig. He's in not Israel. how I imagined Azrael, but I think he worked really well. Yeah. Um, I think Nicole Kidman has some of the a aspects of Mrs. Coulter, but there wasn't space to explore her. Yeah, now. I agree. I and she wasn't how I pictured her. She was her very two-dimensional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the villain. Yeah, she basically. was. Um, and yeah, there was no space to explore that further, and sort of yeah. later on in the in the story, which they completely cut out. But we're not talking about that. We're talking yeah. about. Hopes and dreams. Lee Scoresby, I thought, was fantastic. He was. He was perfect, absolutely, as I imagined him. I would love Lee Scoresby to be played by Daryl from The Walking Dead. I could imagine yeah. that so much, and I can't remember his name. He needs to look older, though, because he is only about, what, late 30s, I think, so he needs mm. to look older. But he has that rugged, I don't know, traveller look about yeah. him on his own. I really am bad with names, but I would really love Gwendolyn, who's in Game of Thrones to play Mary. I would love that. I think she'd make a really good Mary. That's not at all how I picture her, but... I, I don't think it is how I picture her, but I could see her it's Gwendolyn being Christie, a good one. isn't it? Yes. yes. I, would, I would really like that. Yes. Um, now, I know that we disagree on this, but I think that Eva Green as Sarah Green and I just don't like Eva Green, perfect. so... <laughs> I love Eva Green, so... I mean, I'm sure she's a lovely yeah. person, but when, I, in, in, like, when she was in um, James Bond and things, I just find her a little bit... I don't know, grating. There's, there's something about the way she plays women mm. in this overtly sexualized way that kind of bugs me slightly. Because I don't, I, I think mm. the thing is I don't believe it. When she does it, I don't believe it. If I believed okay. her, that would be cool. Yeah. But I don't. Okay. So, well, I believe yeah. her. I believe in you, Eva. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But that is the thing, actually. I don't think I can imagine a lot of the cast apart from the ones I already know from the film that I hate, which bugs me yeah. a lot. What about, what about Will? I mean, I they think young have to be, though, aren't they? They have to be unknown. I think Lara has to be an yeah. unknown, too. Mm. She just needs to be much scruffier. <laughs> well, I was trying to think, I was wondering why we said that. obviously because Will wasn't cast before, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I uh, think Jack's I, looking a little bit like my brother. I was going to say, I picture him looking like a young Rupert Grint a bit. I'm just picking people from other fantasy films. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. There are lots yeah, of other options Just people out who there. are in costumes. Yeah. I have a tendency to cast everyone in my head as David Tennant. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Lara, Lara would be excellently played by David Tennant. <laughs> Absolutely. I think he could do it. Who would he play then? I don't know if there's a David Tennant character for this one, is there? I don't know. No. It just, I end up in my head when I'm reading something, just everybody. <laughs> everybody is <laughs> everything. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so yes, in short, we are excited. At the same time, I just really hope that they learn from their mistakes. I think so. Well. I think they will. They go to uh, Ireland. But, um, <laughs> hey, yeah. hope, hopefully they will because, I mean, we, we could spend a whole, we could spend hours just nitpicking. We could. The, um, the sorry, adaptations. I'm just going to grab her off the door because otherwise she's going to look at my case. Yeah, I think we could nitpick for ages and also I think that I'm, I'm happy to be pleasantly surprised. Mm. I don't actually want to go in with real high hopes as to who's going to play who because they're and never going to do yeah, that. Yeah, and that will add to the magic of it. Yeah. Just going through it and being like, oh, that's Lee Scoresby, I never thought of that. Or, <gasps> could Maggie Smith be in it though because that would be awesome, but I don't know who she could play. Or mm. Julie Walters. Mm. Just Julie Walters. Everyone from Harry Potter. Mm. In, in everything. Yeah. David Tennant and Julie Walters, that would just be... Perfect cast. That would be really good. good. This is not really a question, but this is something that I wanted to bring up because I thought it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I was watching Katie's video this morning over at Books and Things, which Holly will link down below. Mm -hmm. um, she did a video, she did that, his dot materials tag with her boyfriend, and her boyfriend said that he had read The Subtle Knife first, um, and then he had gone on to read The Elmer Spyglass because he hadn't realised that The Subtle Knife um, was not the first book. I mean, he started reading it, then he realised, he was like, oh, screw that, I'm just going to read it anyway. 
Um, so I suppose you could do. Yeah, you could. And I was thinking, why would you do that? But then afterwards, I was like, no, that kind of makes sense. Yes, you could do that. Mm. Um, so it was quite interesting because to him then, Will is the main character and Lyra is this girl who's just invaded his private space. <laughs> and then he went on to read the third one, uh, which is obviously from lots of different people's perspective. Well, mm. following lots of different people around anyway. And then went back and read all the nights and was thoroughly annoyed by Lyra because there's no Will and it just follows mm. her around without anyone else you know, to go and look at instead. So mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting because he now has a completely different perspective on the books. Yes, and I do wonder what it would be like reading them for the first time as an adult and what you would make of Lyra because I think I project all of my childhood memories of how much I love Lyra onto her, but yeah. she can be a nuisance. She's a spoilt brat. Like yes, that. and we're going to talk about that we a bit are. more. She's yeah. like something that's tumbled out of Peter Pan. She's like a lost boy, mm. or a lost girl. Yes. Um, and or she wants to be a lost boy. I think that's it actually. She actually comes from this place of massive privilege, but she tries to reject all that and she puts on an accent a lot of the time, I think. Yeah. To try and fit in with the kids around her um, at the college and with Roger. And then the next minute she'll put on a dress, which she doesn't like wearing. She doesn't like being feminine and all of that. Mm. And she doesn't like being clean, um, but she will talk about her privilege then and go to dinner with the scholars and be like, oh, my dad was really famous and he did all of this stuff and we have lots of money. Yeah. Um, so she, she uses it for that storytelling as well. Yes, yeah, she does. She's, she's talking about her, her parents being like, like royalty, a princess, essentially. Princess, yeah. Yes, and like, how her is, dad yeah, like killed that. Like this other mm. guy and all this stuff. Mm. So, I mean, the actual story intriguing. ends up being even more ridiculous yes, than all these does. stories that she tells. <laughs> I mean, Lyra, uh, Lyra is called that because she's a liar. Like that is why her name is that. She's a liar, mm. and that was one of those moments as well when I realised that when yeah. I was reading it one of the first times. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's a liar. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, and, and you have that moment in the in the, the harpies. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shouting liar, liar. Yeah. Um, so yes, she doesn't she tries on lots of different people i think she mm -hmm. doesn't really have an identity she doesn't know who her parents are at the beginning and she is dumped really essentially in this college so while she comes from privilege she's also not treated very well by most people no um she doesn't fit into either world she doesn't no yeah or either gender really she takes mm. a lot of different she takes what she wants from whoever she's around basically um, and yeah. she's like a magpie i think that's how i think of her anyway she mm. collects shiny things like yeah, easy. and it's very interesting in, in the audiobook, you, you hear those accents that she puts on, you go, hang on, why are you doing this, Lyra? <laughs> <laughs> and I got quite annoyed with her at times because of that. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, you, you notice it so much more than you do if you're reading it. I think that a lot of it is down to her lack of self-confidence, and it's all bravado, mm. really. Mm. Um, and then when she meets Will, that's stripped back quite a bit, and you get to see her as she is. I, I find that really interesting in the second book where Will is in uh, Chitagatsi and he sees Lyra like a feral child and <laughs> she's awful and she can't open a tin of beans and she tells him to do the washing up and she doesn't want to leave money for anything and he thinks that she's terrible and I thought oh my god Lyra's changed a lot since the first book and then yeah, I thought just, wait no she hasn't. Yeah this is what she looks yeah. like from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting also because Pan is part of her soul, mm. but he is very different to her. He's always trying yeah. to keep it in check. So part of her is like that. Part yeah. of her wants to, you know, be a bit more controlled. I am like Pan. I would be the one going, let's get out of here. Why are we hiding in this wardrobe, you silly girl? <laughs> let's go home. I don't yeah. want to get into trouble. It's very boring. I don't like, want to like, um, in, in The Little Mermaid, I'd be like... Flounder. Um, Flounder. Yeah, just being really worried. Flounder is Ariel's demon. Nice. Yeah? Nice. Revelations. Yeah. Thanks, Disney. <laughs> what was even the question? Oh, about the reading of the book. Yeah, I found that quite yeah. interesting. And it's kind of, it reminded me of How to Both by Ellie Smith, which is printed in two different ways. One section is in the 1400s, one is in the 1960s. Um, and it depends which one well, you pick up. present day, isn't it? And then there are flashbacks or mentions in the 1960s. Ooh. I thought it was 1460s and 1960s, but yeah, maybe it's flashbacks to 1960s. Yeah. Yes. And you think it is because the cover has got the yeah. 60s photo, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's interesting because most of the time, whatever section your book has printed in first is the one that people tend to like the most, and then they don't like the other section too much. So I thought, mm. I, it's really interesting. I would love to be able to approach these books again 
and see how I felt about them as a first time reader. Obviously, yes. that's entirely impossible. Mm. Okay, so we're we're going to finish up with that question. Yes, we are. And we're going to switch over to Jen's channel. So for race and gender and sexuality and yes. all of that stuff, yes. head over. Link yeah. down below. See you there.